This video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. I really don't see any serious advantage in having a carbon steel knife, unless... I'm Graham Clark. I'm a metallurgist by profession, and I run Clark Knives in rural Wiltshire, where we run knife making courses, and we also run a heat treatment service for knife makers, and we make Damascus steel billets, which we sell out to other knife makers. That is a question which I'm never going to give an answer which satisfies everybody who's watching this video. All I can tell you is what I consider to be the pros and cons of carbon steel and stainless steel, and you can make your own mind up as to what you want to use. Now, you hear lots of stories. Ah, oh, yeah, carbon steel, you can get it much sharper. Stainless steel doesn't corrode and rust. All these things are partially true. But if you understand the difference between them, then you'll understand why people say these things. Now, carbon steel is an alloy of iron and carbon. The iron forms up with the carbon and makes iron carbides. The, uh, th these are little tiny microscopic particles that exist within the structure of the steel. Iron carbides are very much harder than pure iron. And when you've heat treated it properly, so you've generated the hard particles, you make a cutting edge, which will last quite well. I mean, I remember my mother's knives were all black, had a black patina on them. They were carbon steel knives. And my dad used to sharpen them with a butcher steel and uh, it would keep them sharp. And this is the argument you get with carbon steel, that carbon steel is much easier to sharpen than stainless steel. Now stainless steel is basically the same thing, iron and carbon, same amount of carbon in roughly, but there is at least 12 to 13% chrome, and sometimes as much as 17 to 20% chrome in there. Now it's the chromium that makes them rust resistant. They're not totally stainless. You've got to get a different kind of stainless that cannot be hardened like the stuff you make your pots and pans with. That's called austenitic stainless. It's not heat treatable, but that stuff is very, very difficult to corrode. Now your stainless steel knife is pretty good. I mean, I've made stainless steel knives. I've got some that I made 15 years ago. They're not showing any signs of corrosion. They get used every day in our kitchen. So the difference is the stainless steel knife has now got this extra bit of chromium in them. If you get above that, I, I think the theoretical figure is about 11.8 percent chrome but it, you know we know it's got to be 12 13 percent minimum really to become stainless and that chromium forms chrome oxide on the surface of your knife blade if if it's a completely clean surface with nothing on it at all no oxides on it chrome will react with oxygen at room temperature to make chrome oxide instantaneously it's only a layer that's microns, possibly sub-microns thick, I don't really know, but it's very, very thin, but it's completely impervious to further oxygen. So more oxygen can't get down to react with the iron underneath and make it go rusty. And that's what stops it going rusty. The other advantage that I see that you get from stainless steel is that the, the carbon in the formulation of the stainless steel, now remember it's still 0.8% carbon, you've got your 13, 14, 15% chrome in there. That chromium and the carbon, they react to form chromium carbides. And again, these are microscopic particles which end up on your cutting edge and they're nice and hard and they stop it going blunt. Now, chrome carbides are several orders of magnitude harder than iron carbides. So if you've got a equally sharp knife with either a, a carbon steel, a 0.8% carbon steel or a 0.8% carbon chrome steel, your chrome steel edge is going to last much longer. There were trials done in the 1980s in the States. There's a, there's a book I had, I can't quite remember the name of it, but I think it's called Producing a Razor Edge or something, or the Razor Edge Book of Sharpening, something like that. And they did trials in an abattoir where they got, got knives, some had red handles, some had blue handles, and all the butchers said, no, the ones with one particular color lasted four, six, sometimes eight times longer than the others before they had to resharpen them with their steel during the course of an eight hour shift. And that was the stainless steels that were staying sharper. However, a lot of knife makers will say to you, yeah, but you can't get a stainless steel knife as sharp as a carbon steel knife. You can, it's just not so easy. Why? Because you've got chrome carbides in there. Chrome carbides are very difficult or very hard, so they make your sharpening process a little bit more tedious and a little it takes a bit longer. Like just about anything in metallurgy, and I'm sure you're going to hear this in further episodes of this video, everything in metallurgy is a compromise. Carbon steel will hold an edge four, six times longer 
than a similar formulation in a carbon steel because it has the chrome carbide. Probably gonna take you four or six times longer to sharpen it. I know my ones at home, I spend quite a lot of time in my butcher steel maintaining the edge on my stainless steel knife. I don't have any carbon steel knives at home. I'm too lazy to keep them clean, but I'm sure if I did, I would be sharpening them much easier. So that's really the story behind carbon and chrome steel. To me, I don't really see, especially if you're using it for a kitchen knife, a culinary knife, I really don't see any serious advantage in having a carbon steel knife. Unless, of course, you wanna make fancy pretty patterns like Damascus. And there, you know, your carbon steels are there as one of your, you need the carbon steel. Stainless steel Damascus is very much more difficult to make. It can be made. I haven't quite cracked it yet, but I'm, I know what I need to do to do so. Uh, it's easier to make it with carbon steel. And if you pick the right kind of carbon steel, for instance, if I'm making Damascus for a kitchen knife, I don't use 1080 or 1094 or 1095 for my core. I will always use 01. Why? Because 01's got tungsten in it and chromium in it and vanadium in it and tungsten chrome and vanadium carbides are the hardest of the ones that you get so if you use an 01 tool steel yes you will get it sharp and it will maintain an edge very similar to a carbon steel knife and then again it's just as difficult to sharpen as a, as a, as a sorry as a stainless steel knife but then it be, makes the the, the 01 uh, knife as difficult to sharpen as your stainless steel knife so like as i said before everything's a compromise if you want a better performance, then you've got to start working into the tool steels like your O1s. I wouldn't go any further than that. I've seen people, I mean, I've had a sword in here to, to heat treat, which was made out of high speed steel. I just cannot see any logic in making a sword out of high speed steel, simply because if, you, if you're going to use it, it's going to break. And if you're not going to use it, because it's, it's hard, you can't, get the, you can't get the springiness into the high speed steel that you really need. It's very expensive, so it's a waste of money. If it's just going to sit up on the, on the mantelpiece for you to look at and look pretty, then just make it out of a piece of ordinary steel. It doesn't need to be made out of fancy stuff. So high speed steels and some of the top end tool steels, I don't really see the point in using. Certainly, you know, if you want to go up from carbon steel to something a bit better, but still stay with carbon steel, and particularly when you're making carbon steel Damascus, it's very nice to use, O1's a great choice. If you're going over to stainless steels, again, you've got your entry level materials. AEBL is a simple iron chromium carbon steel works like a dream. Some of the more modern steels um, have got nitrogen in them. I think it's 14C28N is one of the more modern steels where they've remelted the steel inside a furnace that's under very high pressure with uh, a nitrogen atmosphere. And nitrogen gets absorbed into the surface. They lower the carbon content and it still produces a knife which is just as hard. It's supposed to be a bit more ductile. Um, it's supposed to be a bit tougher when you've made it. To be quite honest, if you've got an AEBL knife and you abuse it that much, you're going to, you break it and you need to go to 14C, you shouldn't really be using the knife in the first place because an, AE, uh, an AEBL knife is still pretty tough. But they are supposed to be a little bit better. I think Nylox might be another one. I can't quite remember which ones are which. And then the only ones that are really better to, to go up a stage further from there is when you go to your powder metallurgy steels. Now, powder metal steels really are in a class of their own and, and they're different because of the way they make the steel. All the other materials, you, you know, you heat, you melt your steel in a big furnace, you pour it into a big ingot and let it go uh, into an ingot mold and let it solidify. Now it takes quite a long time, it can take hours for that steel to solidify. And during that time, you get what is called segregation. The, the steel starts to solidify at one temperature. The whole temperature range from, from when it starts to solidify to when it finishes can be anything up to 100 degrees centigrade as it cools down and during that stage you've got a combination of solids and liquids within that mold and the first bits that solidify have got a different composition to the last i'm not going to try and explain to you how that that actually happens but it does and there's not much you can do about it to stop it except cool it a bit quicker that reduces it but then again that creates other problems so what they came up with and i, th I think this first started probably 20 30 years ago it's not something that's brand new but it's been developed all the time and made better and better is you take that liquid steel and you spray the liquid into a room that's full of high purity nitrogen. So you've got these tiny little droplets of steel which freeze almost instantaneously in the air and fall down and you come in and you shovel up all this powder and then you compress the powder very very high temperatures and pressures but below the melting point of the steel so it all sticks together uh, called hydrostatic uh, pressing um, or hot isostatic pressing and then you take that billet and you put it through a rolling mill again you might still have some protective atmosphere around it but it will compress everything 
everything back together and make steel out of it. Now the advantage of doing that is it cuts out the segregation. So for instance, if you're making a, a good quality stainless tool steel, you might want to put vanadium in there because vanadium carbides are very hard. Well, I think once you get above about four or five percent vanadium, the segregation becomes a problem. But with powder met steel, I've seen it up as 10, 12, 13, 14 percent vanadium in there. So you've got an incredible large amount of these vanadium carbides, which are one of some of the hardest you can get. Therefore, the the material is is very much better and is very much different and you've got a very fine grain size which is also uh, very nice so you haven't got this segregation in there again here comes the old compromise it's an absolute pig to work with if you've ever made a, a knife out of powder metallurgy steel you'll know what you know what I mean you know when I'm making knives I, I get a rough idea of how many knives I'm going to grind out of one particular grinding belt if I use powder metal steels it's how many grinding belts am I going to use per knife and it doesn't matter whether it's been heat treated or not it's an absolute pig to work with but the knives made out at the end of that absolutely brilliant you can get mirror finishes on them without any horrible patterns and that you get on some other high alloy stainless steels yeah, they're just good. So that's really your three, I would say you've got three classes of steel really. You've got your carbon steels, you've got your basic stainless steels, and then you've got your powder met steels, which is top of the tree. What type of steel do you prefer to work with? Is it 1080 carbon steel, or do you like the Nilex stainless? Please tell me more about it in the comments section below. Check out this other knife making video here, or click this one on the top if you feel like binge watching another series.